10,000 years will give you such a crick in the neck. What? what? Ladies and gentlemen, after God knows how long, welcome back to another edition of AWP, the Anything Wrestling Podcast. We are back today for a very special episode, and hey, if you're ever coming back, why not come back in a big way? We are here to talk about a lot of things, namely the biggest show of the year, WrestleMania. It is another triple threat going today. It is myself, the Shant, Dan the Man, and the Kamish. Welcome, welcome back, everyone. So nice he had to say it twice. We've been gone for a long while, guys. A, a lot has a happened. While. Yeah, that's that's an understatement. So many things to kind of gloss yes. over. Yes, so many yes. things. So many things. But I think the first thing that we have to address first and foremost is that roughly about 12 or 13 days ago, we lost another one uh, gone way too soon, way too early, just like The Undertaker said. A few days ago, we lost Razor Ramon, a.k.a. Scott Hall, a.k.a. The Bad Guy, uh, Razor Ramon was very instrumental in the new generation era um, after Hulkamania was sort of no longer a thing in WWE. He, along with Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart, those were guys Those guys were kind of the cornerstone of that era who kind of helped usher in the new era. Um, but what do you guys think? Uh, we lost another one, three heart attacks, had a hip surgery apparently. Um I think I told you guys in a group chat, I think the most remarkable thing was that Razor was one of those guys that was able to at least turn his life around, get inducted into the Hall of Fame, and have a really good outing before he left us. What do you guys think? It, it's good that he got the recognition that he deserved before it all went down. There's too many times that you have these posthumous inductions, like with Randy Savage. Um, so it's nice that he got acknowledged before, um, it was too late, yeah. but yeah, as, as you said, as, uh, has been said countless times, it, it is a shame. And, uh, he was, he was trying to turn his life around and, uh, well, this, this is where we are. In honor. Hey, yo, there it is. Uh, we've been very, uh, synonymous with that catchphrase because we've always used it right before we took a survey but um yeah if i, if I can add this in and i know sure. everyone that has always been a fan especially a fan of scott halls i know that people live by this quote now and hopefully everyone does apply it to their lives hard work pays off dreams do come true bad times don't last but bad guys do. I love that saying so much. And I think that it just, it was something that was synonymous with him, but I think it has now become even more synonymous because I think it encapsulates everything that we just talked about, the turning your life around and the bad times and just sort of being able to walk through to the other side. Um, in honor and in respect for Scott Hall, we should have uh, just a few seconds of silence to honor the memory of Razor Ramon, a.k.a. Scott Hall. Rest in paradise, Scott Hall. Um, with that, we also have uh, another piece of news to cover. Well, actually a few. Um, I'm not sure which order we want it to go in, but we go from a death to a retirement. Very long time tenured WWE, former WCW superstar um, Triple H announced that he is officially done with in-ring competition. Not I, necessarily by his own choice. <laughs> Yeah, um, very scary, actually, because I think that in that interview, he stated how close he was to actually, you know, not making it. Yeah. Um, I think to date, his last match was with Batista two years ago. No, I think it was with Randy Orton. Was was that the uh, last one? Crown Jewel event? I'm not sure. It, I'm kind of in a haze when it comes to that period, but I, it was one of those two. It was not. <laughs> 
Um, but very quickly on that, your guys' opinion. I, I thought that Triple H would have that one last match before he retired. But um, what do you guys think? Well, I think it's one of those things where, unfortunately, time and health just catches up to you. Yeah. Because he, he's gone for a long time. And if we're um, being candid, I'm sure that there are some things he did earlier in his career that probably didn't, that probably didn't help with what sounds like a cardiovascular issue that he had for a while uh um, genetically yeah but uh he made it a long way for somebody dealing with that so uh plus th- there had, thank you hunter for all of your work plus there had been like you know the things that you know the wrestling world does take a lot out of you yes. you know you put you invest your full time into it when you're in it when you have to be put to the side, you know, and then whether it's an executive role, a booker, a writer, whatever it is backstage, that takes up your time as well. But I, I could, could have sworn I remember, uh, I think he said it in his, uh, Stephen A. Smith interview where he's like, you know, I have three daughters, you know, 15, 13 and 11 years old. And I don't want them to feel like, Oh, did daddy wake up? He got emotional there for a second. And that's something to really think about because it's like he lost one of his great friends in in Scott. Yeah. You know, I'm sure, of course, no one ever wants to leave this earth as early as possible. So he made a, a, a wise decision, family based and, you know, for his health. And of course, he's going to be missed, you know. He, he he himself is still one of the greatest. Um, but he had to do what he had to do. That's the thing, too, is I feel like some people dismiss Triple H because of his early career and the stuff with China and all he married into the family. But look, there's just some moments where you have to give people like their props. You have to give them their respect in due time. And I think Triple H was one of those guys that certainly deserves it because he's come a long way. He's given us a lot of great moments. So to just dismiss it and say, oh, he slept his way to the top or he did some things that were questionable. You would be remiss if you didn't mention how he was one of the big players behind the women's revolution, providing NXT, providing those women's matches. So the May Young Classic and all of that. So he's a guy that definitely understands the business. Yeah, so for sure. He's definitely an asset to uh whatever he does definitely so hey i'm glad that he caught it ahead of time um and that he was able to get in front of it before it got worse so hey triple h thank you for the memories we'll miss you seeing inside the ring but i'm sure we will see him in a ceo capacity role backstage so uh at least we have that and so I feel like the rest of these things can go pretty quick. Yes. Uh, So another big piece of news, WWE 2K uh, making its uh, triumphant uh, return after a year hiatus after the uh, debacle that was 2K20. Uh, So welcome back, 2K22. So far, it's... It's, it's, a, it's, a, okay. it's okay. It's all right. It's it's an improvement over the last one. It's but, a step forward. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have a couple of uh, notable Hall of Fame induction candidates. Yes. The Steiner brothers as a collective, which... We just want to emphasize it's both of them, it not is just both one. Of them, which we talked about a little bit before we came on air. They do have, you know, their own individual, you know, accolades and championship wins, but... Both men have been inducted together. Of course, we're very surprised with the inclusion of Scott Steiner. Keyword, together. Yes. But it is what it is. But the marquee inductee, The Undertaker, finally getting his uh, long, long long-deserved indoctrination Indoctrination. to the uh, WWE Hall of Fame. So congratulations Congratulations. to the Steiners. Congratulations to uh, Mark Congratulations to Vader. Uh, Queen, Queen Charmella. Charmel, yeah. Wait, Charmel or Charmel? Charmel. Oh, sorry, I said Charmel. But uh, one last thing about the uh, induction ceremony, the Warrior Award. Yeah. Yes, that's... This year's yep. recipient, Shad Gaspard. I'm sorry, Shad, Shad Gaspard passed away in 2020 or was it last year? 2020. 
Okay. Yeah, I knew that. I felt like there was a gap there, but thankfully they're doing the right thing because I think immediately after this situation happened with Shad, that's the one thing that everybody sort of jumped to was that not only put him in the Hall of Fame, but give him that Warrior Award, which is so appropriate. So, hey, a uh, round of applause for, for all the inductees this year. Um, all of them honestly deserved, uh, especially The Undertaker, who has left us with so many memories. And... Uh, yeah, it's going to be a phenomenal night, but we are here to talk about the night after the Hall of Fame. The- and and the night after the night after the Hall of Fame. Because there's two nights. What? <laughs> there's two is, the Hall nights. Of, is the Hall of Fame on Friday or is it yes, on, Saturday, it's on like Friday. early Saturday? Okay, so yeah. The it, day after and the day after the day after. The day after the day after the day after. I mean, who knows after? what's going to happen on the day after the day after after the day after so how many days after anyway so so we got ourselves another as you guys can see we haven't missed a beat and we haven't changed one bit and we're we're, but here's the fun thing is uh, we've we're on what wrestlemania three well no wrestlemania three where it's been two nights at this point yes and we keep pretending that this hasn't been a thing for the last two years it's like, oh, it's so big, we gotta have it on two nights. You fucking did it before. So what are you talking about? Um, Dan. Why are you acting like there were, weren't two days last year and the year before? and the Not the year before, actually. You know what makes it different this year? It's stupendous. Yep. It, it, Whatever it that means. It is the next big thing. thing. Have a Mr. B. <laughs> yeah. So really... let's go ahead. Let's jump right in. I'm going to take over on night one. Kamish, you take over night two. We'll break down and the And I'll take over. And the Never shots mind. will sit there and, and uh, look pretty. Or just look. Give us so, insights. Anywho, what a way to start this. I'm just going to go in order. I have no idea if this we is don't the know order if this of the is, card. Yeah, yeah. But what a way for me to start uh, bringing up the man, Seth? Becky Lynch. Oh. Versus Bianca Belair. Bianchi. In a singles match for the WWE Raw Women's Championship. Hair versus hair. No way. No. I think Becky's going to look great with, with, a, with a Bob, personally. Not like a, uh, what's her name? Bailey Bob. But Bailey. You know what I mean. She's going to look good with, with short hair. Um, but if we're talking about the winners, which we'll get to in a second. In a second. I, I might not be going with my favorite here. So anyway, oh. as it boils down, there's been a lot going on with this match. Bianca doing the hair whip. Uh, Becky one-upping her at SummerSlam and kind of here and there along the way. The, it, I feel like it's been a nice little tug of war between these two. Hey, do you get it? Oh, my God. And How many s- hair puns do you have? <laughs> I would tell you, but it might get a little bit hairy. I feel like you missed the, the, the landing on that one by just a just a thread. Just the hair. I think... I haven't missed a beat. We haven't. I think that Bianca has to go over in this one yes. to redeem herself for uh, for is SummerSlam. Is it really a redemption? I mean, she she has had the, the, the benefit of not really getting hurt by anything since then. Mm-hmm. Which WWE is notoriously bad at. Yes. Lately. <laughs> like, or the last five like, years. Where where's Liv? Oh, that's right. In a tag team match with a with... patchwork team mm-hmm. mixed with Rhea, which we'll get to on night, night two. two. Where is Sashi? Night two. Anyway. So Hell, where the um, hell is Bailey at this point? Ding dong. <laughs> Hello. Hello. So Bianca I think goes over on this one. Uh what do you guys think? I'm gonna go with Bianca Biller uh going over and winning the Raw Women's Championship. I think she's earned the accolade. The 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 build up has kind of been there. As, as fans, we can build it up, you know. Um, the embarrassment that uh, Becky caused at SummerSlam last year. The whole months and months worth of like agonizing torture that's kind of been fastly paced for the last month. Um, I, I gotta give it to Bianca. I, I, I think, you know, as much as I've kind of told you guys, 
that they've made Becky look like, you know, the female equivalent of Conor McGregor <laughs> with the gimmicks and the outfits and everything. Yeah. To me, everything changed in the aspect for Becky when she did the whole, uh, the, you know, I'm at the top of the mountain, I'm the prize at the top promo. You know, I, I like that side. I, I, I think this is what we should have been seeing for months from Becky, this ruthlessness, this, this to quote it, ruthless this aggression. aggression. As opposed to, you know, the gimmick of I'm beyond the man, I'm big time Bex now, you know. The gimmick of the gimmick, basically. Yes. What, what we're getting now, is, you know, is that, you know, I'm I'm here to kick your ass. I'm here, to, you know, to claim what, what is mine and no one's going to take it. Unless I get someone worthy, and this is who is worthy, in my opinion. Yeah, I am in unison with you guys. I love Becky. I do think that ever since she came back at SummerSlam, that's where her sort of attraction kind of dwindled as a superstar, personally. Uh, like you said, Kamish, I, I'm not, I haven't been a fan of the over-the-top outfits and even the promos to be honest i feel like i did like the jacket with the stuffed goats on the shoulder i thought that one was ridiculous and fun but (laughs) stuffed goats people (laughs) but um yes i do agree because i think that while becky has been a long reigning champion it's sort of getting to the point where it's like okay we get it can we move on to someone else like who's next goldberg's in this match i think that an interesting thing that could transpire, but based on something I I read before we got on air, I don't think it's going to happen, would be if you used this as a catalyst for the return of Bailey. How where, so? Where maybe Bailey in, in, interferes and she costs Becky the title. Interesting. Um, and then you've set up a feud with those two because Becky, I think, realistically transcends the title a little bit at this point she's made it to that pinnacle where she is a draw regardless of if she's in the the title picture yes but do i think that's necessarily going to happen no but there's a couple of places on here where you could potentially see a bailey return yes are they doing the women's battle royal thing or is that i don't believe so don't believe so i I don't think we're doing either of the battle royals but yes i am i am in agreement with you guys so it's unanimous uh bianca belair for all three of us a uh, new champion, and I'm sure Becky will go and feud with somebody else in a main attraction, and then Bianca can kind of go off and do her thing uh, with the title. So it's a win-win. All right, moving on to the next match, one that I personally don't really care that much about. The Mysterios, yeah. Ray, Raymond, and Dominic uh, versus uh, Mike the Miz Mazanin and Logan Paul. <sighs> um, Bathroom break, anyone? On match two. Um, I'm going to keep this one short and sweet. I think that because it's WrestleMania, you have to have the the Mysterios go over, but Logan gets a spot. 619. (laughs) Um, and yeah, I think that's all I got to say on this That is, I agree. Bathroom break. Wow. Wait, who do you think is winning? Mysterios? Yeah. Okay, so we're in unison again. Mysterios are winning. (laughs) Perfect. Moving on. We have a nice streak going on. It would be a shame if a streak got broken at WrestleMania. Here we go. Uh, Drew McIntyre, the yeah. Scottish psychopath. I'm not sure what that was. No, no, no. I love general him. lack it's of just, excitement for the match. Yes. Versus Happy Corbin with Madcap Moss. So, I've, like, I feel like it's pretty clear Drew goes over in this match. I agree. Um, because Baron isn't, or sorry, Corbin, he's not ba- the Baron anymore. The Bear of um, Bad News. They're <laughs> mid, they're mid, mid card at best right now. Their characters are just sort of. Honestly, I think if there was one other pay per view that Drew was just kind of put in there with someone, and I think it was just an excuse to just have him on the card because he's supposed to be one of your main event guys. Yeah. So I think that's personally what this is. Hey, we need Drew on the card. Give him the paycheck. Yes. (laughs) So uh, Drew wins. Drew wins. Drew wins. But furthermore, there was there was talk of Drew and um, the big dog at some point. Sorry, Tribal Chief. Um, at some point fighting. So, uh, I mean, I think Drew, again, is sort of a transcends yes. um, a certain level where he 
he is a definitive mid uh, main event star at this point. Yeah. Um, d- regardless of where he is, so that's why I guess this feels like an awkward combination to go with. Three, I know. Then <laughs> what? We move on to the WWE SmackDown Tag Team Championship match. Sorry, I want to try that one more time, even though they're not in it. The WWE SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Speaking of which, Big E, I hope you feel better soon. Indeed. Uh, But in this case, we're talking the Usos uh, versus Shinsuke Nakamura and Rick. Boogs. This one we might see a divide on, honestly. Because... I want to. I want to start where the divide is, actually. Uh, I'm. I. I kind of want. I kind of want to see Shinsuke and Rick Boogs walk away with the belts in this one. <laughs> Rick, Come uh, Rick's kind of fun. I could. I could see them going over in this and losing it on SmackDown. Like As opposed to four days after, like four days after. But I could see them doing the face victory on this one. So I'm going to go with Shinsuke and Boogs. <laughs> well, okay, that okay. It. It, it's just, it's hard to really just define a winner in this just because one, Shinsuke. 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 And him. Yeah. The, with this card, they're mid card at best. They're mid card at best. Well, what do you think the tag titles are? You think they're main event, or you think they're mid card? Well, if judging John by who's carrying the titles, booked right properly. Now. Wait, who the hell is the champions? Ooh, so's. Okay. The fact that you had to ask that. No, is I just part had, of the problem. I had to verify <laughs> because I feel like there's five tag team championships, and I'm trying to keep track of what's what. That's true. True. I, I'm gonna <laughs> have to go with. Dan the man here. I'm going to have to choose Shinsuke and Boogs to win this. I think that no Shinsuke it, and Boogs will win, but who do I want to win? Usos. One other thing that I'll chime in on is I think another reason why those two should take it is so it frees those up for their own storyline because the Usos aren't actively contributing anything with being tag champions within the uh, unified world championship storyline. Yeah. So at least if you give it to Shinsuke and Boogs, they can focus on their story instead of being a set piece for something else. I, I agree. Yes, with the Trivial Chief. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> speaking of the WWE SmackDown Tag Team Champions, we got the New Day in the form of King Woods oh, and hell. Sir Kofi Kingston. Coffee. Facing Seamus and you, Dan. Ridge Holland and who? with Butch. Mm-hmm. Um Woods is like in a he's in a weird upper mid card spot right now. Do you guys feel that too? I feel it only because they like okay, you not only given him something he's wanted for years. The King of the Ring? Yes. Something that is supposed to elevate you. But as Dan says, he is at upper mid-card status. What? Why are we not giving... Dan, this, why? I don't know what the rest of the question is. Are we not giving was. this member of the New Day <laughs> his push? Dan? Why are we not giving him the push? Seriously. And then, the it's... I'm sorry. I am very disappointed at what creative has done with. I, I'm not calling him by his name. Don't, name. don't, please. Don't. I am very upset at what they've done with Pete Dunn. I really am. Like th- this is how we introduce him in. Well, because really? he was doing great in NXT UK. He was doing great in NXT. So why why not bring him in as a bruiserweight? What is wrong with that? What, because, what? because Vince didn't come up with that. Okay, because it's well, a good for... idea. According to who? We're just gonna call him Butch. Did, did he just finish watching Pulp Fiction or some shit? <laughs> I have an idea. Why don't you just grab another guy, name him Luke, and we can have Bushwhackers 2.0. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> For only we're, four ninety nine. We're way past the 80s at are this we? point. Are we? Um, Seriously, are we? I'm trying to think about what? the match, and you guys are trailing off. Okay, um, fine. I'll go back to the match fine. real quick. Do I see... 
uh, this newly formed group of Seamus is going over? Not really. Yeah. I am going to give this to Sir Royal King Woods and Coffee Kingston. Yes. Wait, 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 wait. I just remember something. Isn't he supposed to be Jamaican? <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, however, having just noticed a trend on most of our decision making up to this point, I'm going to go with Seamus and Ridge. <laughs> Okay. Because we've chosen nothing but faces. <laughs> Have we? Yeah. I, oh, crap. We've chosen yeah. only the good guys for the first four matches. I don't see them as baby faces and heels right now. Not yeah, until we get to I, a serious I, match. I feel like we're lost in that era of baby faces and heels. Well, either way, I, I, I think part of it is also the fact that Woods went over Ridge so quickly the other night. Mm-hmm. That I could see it being a thing where that was like a throwaway and then they get one up on them. Because okay. I think they're going to keep this going somehow, um, even though they don't have a Big E for presumably a very long time. Yeah. Uh, so I just see Big E coming back as a manager at this point, just to wow. be safe. No, to at be least safe. for a while. At least for yeah. a while. Um, Neck injuries are extremely serious. Uh, you're telling me. My my boy's career got cut by 19 years, and I'm hoping to see him back. <laughs> um, I'm going to say New Day on this one, honestly. Because Sheamus is uh, he's great. Pete Dunne is great. The other guy, I have no idea who the hell he is. But he, well, he's the one who dropped Biggie on his neck. So... <laughs> a-hole. Nobody blamed him, from what I heard. No, but, I know. It, it was, it was well, a, a poor release, and and big. We, I think we may have talked about this. Biggie's a lot of meat. Now, when you say poor <laughs> release, I are I we talking? Are we talking the about page. the eighty people? Okay, see, he's going back to it. I try, I try to bring up a logistical thing. <laughs> Go ahead. What Go was your bring it up. I was gonna say, all right, when you say bad release, are you talking about the eighty people that got released who didn't make it onto WWE Two K Twenty Two? I think mine was just as on topic as his was. I think it was. So anyway, <laughs> let's move along uh, to your boy, your, new, your boy. Oh, Sako Rollins Young. Uh, sorry, Sako freaking Rollins John. Mm-hmm. There we go. That's not, not going to last long. Mm-hmm. Versus a superstar I've never heard of, Tibba. 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 Uh, who, uh, I guess, Mr. McMahon is going to announce the night of the event. <sighs> So we this have one, absolutely no idea who that is. This one leaves a little bit of dis- discussion to talk about because we <laughs> we pretty much have a consensus here as to who it could be. I mentioned that I just read a thing and I didn't look at the date on it that suggested that Shane McMahon is in fact mm. being brought back in for something on WrestleMania, which might be a bait and switch. It might be a red herring. Um. Or it could be they they gen- genuinely try to swerve us. So the gobbledygook, <laughs> maybe. So the goon. The obvious choice, the obvious answer, based on all the buzz, all the things that we've heard, all the hype. <laughs> so let's just, let's just get yeah. it out already. We Cody. all believe it's the American nightmare. Yeah. So we all are on that page now. Could it be a swerve? And he actually debuts on Monday, and this is all stupid. Yeah. Yes. But they would. I think that the better plan, and they should just do it and commit, is yes to de- re debut. I guess Cody. Well, do at what they're do what they're doing with Austin. Don't show him. Don't show him. Don't show him until Mania when yeah. it's right. The only time we've seen Austin is what the the, the little promo that yeah, wasn't that he had. yeah yeah deep in the heart of Texas. But then, who wins? I feel like it has to be Cody. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Okay. Obviously, no one is going to believe he's going to come back as Stardust. Let's just get that out in the Jesus. open right now. Everyone is, is speculating that he's been given complete and total creative control of his character. Everyone, be- quote unquote, everyone believes that he is truly going to come back as the American Nightmare. Would you want to see him come back as the American Nightmare? Would you want to hear his kingdom music play would you want to hear his all elite wrestling music play like how much control has he truly been given what what did it take for him not only as a free agent to take days because the rumor mill literally started the day after he left all elite 
Is he going to WWE? Is he going to Ring of Honor? Is he going to go straight to New Japan? Nobody knew. It literally took like a week before or two weeks before Mania for him to sign his contract. Just for giggles, I would love to hear smoke and mirrors. Oh, dear God. Um, But uh, yeah, I, I think that this is their opportunity to kind of Daniel Bryan it. Because when Daniel Bryan popped over to AEW, you had that sort of remix version of Ride of the Valkyries hit, and people went, oh my god. They knew who it was. Yeah. yeah. Now, doing the same thing with Cody here, we've talked about entrance music, so I think that you go with what's recognizable, and that's the most recognizable thing right now. Mm-hmm. So, one million dollar question, who's winning? The only way I see Seth going over is if the point is making it a really, really competitive match. Triple H comes back and screws him over. But I, I mean, I think Cody wins. I, I think so because then you're gonna have a riot on your hands. Really, I think Seth has already put himself over for the last few days, He's last great. week and a half. He's great. His promo last week on Raw was amazing. Was him, great. Him literally calling out, it's bullshit. Let's just call a spade a spade. And then... Shane is in this match? No, good Lord. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the whole... If you guys... Uh, everyone follows social media. If you've seen the current vignette that's playing on WWE's Instagram of Seth going to Vince's office and then low-key playing it away... On Rob, yesterday, yes, yeah. we're recording the day after. Um, I personally think Cody goes over. Yeah. Because Seth has, has done enough to put himself over at a point where it's like, all right, now I need to put my opponent over. Even though I would love to see Seth to win because he's my guy, but there comes to a point where you got to do business. And I think if you're bringing Cody back, you have to. he has to win because if he mm-hmm. loses, where do you go? Now, that being said... If it is anybody other than Cody, I think Seth wins. Of course. Yeah. But uh, do you have someone in mind? Like, Nope. I'm not even going to speculate. I'm not going to throw names out there. I'm just saying, if they make the silly choice of not doing it with Cody, then whoever else it is, I think Seth picks up the win one way or another. Fair. Agreed. Um, and then, speaking of mm. Shayna, Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey for the WWE SmackDown Women's Championship. Is that what's supposedly headlining Mania? No, uh, it's 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 my boy. The moment. Okay. Well, okay. Well, before the moment. This will probably be the last match before that, though. I right. I, I would look. I'm at assuming this thing, knowing the both of them. Because <laughs> this honestly, this is a really weak card for night one. It is. But anyway. Um, Charlotte and Rhonda. I feel like were you gonna chime in with something, something specific? Bad promos all around. That's what? fair. Um, bad program all around. Wow. Uh, so I'm going to say that I expect Rhonda to win. Do you want Rhonda to win? I don't care who wins. Hey, yeah. Wow. Now something yeah. that I read suggests that things would go the other way, but this is also all preemptive it's all what's the show after wrestlemania they probably just have filler shit in there it's a weird person for the champion to go against out of nowhere but it is what it is so anyway i'm gonna go with ronda i'm gonna say ronda picks up the win uh after a hard-fought battle 17 figure eight leg locks and an ankle lock and arm bars no no arm bars i think we're we're focusing on the ankle lock in this one Ooh, interesting. I, I see one countered arm bar. Yeah. That's what I one. think. One. I, I'm going to have to pick the obvious of the obvious, unfortunately. I don't, I still don't like her. I. She still can't cut a promo. She still can't sell it. She's still in this whole idea of like, it's a gimmick. It's a joke. I, and it's like, why are you there then? To pick up the paycheck? Okay, we get it. Clearly, but she gets it. Ronda gets the win. I agree. All right. Thank you for joining us for night one hey, of WrestleMania. Hey, oh, hey, oh, 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 my hey, bad. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> don't don't do my boy like that, okay? All right. Let, let, let's let's have. <laughs> let's talk about that real quick. Because you're right. 
So this moment. go ahead, lead it in. So obviously everybody knows that we have right now what seems to be a segment planned for WrestleMania where you have Stone Cold Steve Austin accepting an invitation to the Kevin Owens show. What? I said he accepts an invitation to the Kevin Owens show. What? He didn't decline. What? He's going to be there. What? Nah. Oh, come on. I'm sorry. I ran out. I'm so <laughs> excited. And, so, you'll, and you'll see why I'm excited. So, so wait. Hold on. Hold on. You couldn't keep going with the what segment? What? You couldn't keep it up. What? You couldn't handle more pressure from it. What? You were trying your hardest. Like Rhonda? Uh, were... I'm done. Anyway. <laughs> so, so you've got the segment. You've got KO Show featuring Steve Austin. Does this go as just a segment? Does it turn into a brawl? Does it turn into a match? What do we think? I will just say this. If it does turn into a match, and this is just personal, this is me talking, and I've told you guys about this, my 18-year dream will finally come true of seeing Austin wrestle while I'm an active wrestling fan. So... I was just going to say that the way that they've been talking about this is that apparently Austin's been working on his conditioning and you, yeah, he said it himself, you've woken up something inside of me that was asleep for 19 years. We've seen Austin make appearances before. He doesn't cut promos like that, you know, that I've been away for all these years. I'm coming back to Mania. You've woken up something inside of me. So it seems like they're hyping this up to be something more than just a segment. So... He has one last can of whoop ass left in him. I don't think we're going to see a 30-minute five-star classic like from back in the day, but I'm assuming we might see like a nine or ten-minute match if it is a match. I will be the uh, harbinger of bad news and suggest that I think it's going to be a segment that turns into a brawl but is actually slated to lead to a match at Backlash. That's what I'm going to say, which I know sounds weird for Austin's return, but I think that it's a weak pay-per-view, so they might try to get the the double dip off of the Austin buzz. Or maybe they do night two at WrestleMania. (laughs) Hypothetically speaking, we're all going to be in unison, I know this, but if the match does happen, who do we think is going to win? Austin. Austin. Austin 316 says he just whipped his ass. All right. Now we can officially move on to night... Duh. Duh. I'm gonna intru- I'm gonna introduce the people after, then the champions. Defending in a fatal four way tag team oh. women's match for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships, we have Sasha Banks and Naomi versus one ooh, Rhea Ripley. Rip 'em, rap 'em, and Liv Morgan versus Natalia and Shayna Baszler. Who? You heard what I said. Versus. God, I'm trying my hardest here. Carmella. Caramel. And. and who? Oh God, you're going to make me say this. Who? 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 Queen Zelina. Wow, he said queen. He didn't even say. He didn't. It, it, I thought he was. I'm so. trying to keep this episode as PG as possible. <laughs> Please don't push my buttons. The commish has a new uh, a new hate relationship out there. He's uh, he's a little past the Ronda. Oh, and, this uh, is beyond a hate relationship. Yeah, this <laughs> oh, one's wow. gotten dark. This, this is years of anger. Did you just say dark? Is this going to turn into a semi dark Piper Driver reference? No, I was just going to oh, say God, no. Uh, I was just going to say Malachi <laughs> Black. Oh yeah. You mean the he House is, of um, Black? He is connected to this match in a way. So sometimes he's connected to her. Let's discuss it. Who do you guys see winning the beginning women's tag match for the women's championships on night two of WrestleMania? I kind of wish it was an elimination match so you could build a little bit more drama around it. I love that. I love that. But they're just going to do one fall to a finish. Um, I'm just watching this match for my girl Liv Morgan. But let's see. Who do I think actually wins? I'm going to say Sasha Naomi. The only reason why I'm saying Sasha, this is going to sound so stupid, she's 0-6 at Mania. Can we please give her her moment? That's, That's all that I'm asking for. And Naomi's was... been on that long losing streak. I, I thought she was 1-5. When did she win? I don't, I'm just asking. I, I'm going to be the consensus of the group as Kamish, well. Kamish, it never, ever happened. Why am I being attacked? I, I, 
Why is he being attacked? It's a Triple H reference. <laughs> is it because it never, ever happened? Again. Don't tell me to calm down. He just kicked Stan. You need to calm down. We just kicked Dan. Get it? Do I need to get out of the car? Anyway, <laughs> so we're all on... We're on unison, right? We are all, <laughs> yes, <laughs> of a consensus that Sasha Banks and Naomi walk out of this match as your new WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. Champion. Let's see. Did someone say champion? Ch- champion. Le champion. They are sports entertainers. There's a lot to talk about in that one, too. Oh, God, that sucks and so bad. You know what match there's not a lot to talk about? The <sighs> next one. What's the next one? Cue the jackass music. Nair, 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 nair. You have won in an Anything Goes match, by the way. Johnny Knoxville versus Sami Zayn. Uh-huh. Are we anticipating a lot of, like, jackass props during this match? I'm Probably. expecting the jackass the crew. crew to be in this match. Steve-O and I, think, I feel like that giant hand has to make an appearance in this match. Johnny Knoxville, like what's the deal, bro? Hand. Is Machine Gun Kelly going to be the one pedaling? Speaking of the hand, Mark Mark Henry? Just had a luncheon with... Uh, what just happened? Um, what's her name? Thunder Rosa, the Ma- current All Mark Elite Henry's Wrestling kid. Women's Champion. You know, hand. Uh, the hand that feeds. What does everybody want? Hand. hand. What does everybody need? Hand. hand. I was thinking of something else. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. I'm gonna go with uh, Johnny Knoxville. You don't he, bring these. You don't bring these celebrities in and not have them. Go especially, over. especially one that's been tr- actually putting an effort to try. I disagree. Oh. I say Sami Zayn's gonna win. Well, the, you're the king of wishful thinking, so <laughs> That's anyway. That's not funny, Dan. I don't appreciate that. <laughs> what do you, uh, well, say your piece. Never mind. Say your no, piece. No, say it. Say I don't want to be a jackass here. I'm going to knock you out. This is a very pun-filled show. Anyway. That's so funny. So, let's <sighs> answer the question. Knoxville, Zane. All eyes on me. Knoxville wins. I'm do, done. Do you care? Do you care to say why you think Sammy's gonna win? Dan, why do you think Sammy's gonna win? Because we I do have win. those moments where the celebrity does come in, but they just get their butt kicked. And honestly, I'm just trying to save the last remaining bits of Sammy Zayn's career, whatever he has left. Very. He still has a lot left. Do you think so? He signed an extension. Well, because I mean, I liked the the thing that he was doing with the conspiracy theory, but I feel like that just kind of fell off you the wheels. You gotta give that a rest. Like the Undertaker's it, it, undefeated streak. Here we go. No, we're not okay. going there. Okay. We're moving on to the next match, which is... Sir Patrick of McAfee the, versus... The uh, versus Vincent Kennedy McMahon's current favorite... Drew McIntyre. No. Austin Theory. Now, in theory, what do we think about this match? I think Theory goes over, and wow. I think Pat gets a uh, relatively impressive showing for an announcer... But, uh, yeah, I, I think Theory takes the, the win on this one. I'm with, gonna... with McMahon's help? No. No. Wow. I, think, I think he's going to do it on his own since he's been trying to do everything else on his own, including one elimination chamber, which, by the way, he did put a very beatful effort into. He got into. knocked out, dude. <sighs> Badly. Um, I'm, I'm going to go with uh, Austin Theory on this one. I think Pat McAfee does get put over, though, even though he loses the match. I mean, he proved in NXT that he can hang. Maybe he can hang better this time. Not enough for the victory, but enough, you know, for a WrestleMania moment. You guys might be right. It might be Austin Theory. I want Pat to win, but it might be Austin. Ooh, interesting. Let us move forward with the triple threat tag team match for the WWE. How many tag team matches are there on this card? Plenty. I don't know, but I just have one thing to say about this match. Hey, Randy. What the hell is wrong with you? Bro. Shut up. For the Raw Tag Team Championship, it will be RK Bro versus the newly reformed and angry Street Profits versus... The Alpha Academy. Shh. 
Thank you. I'm sorry. The both of you are just, you both really need to shush. Did you just shush me? Shush. I told shush. you. Shush. I'm going to ask you to. Shush. Don't do that. Shush. What? Shush. Do you, do you guys know how many ounces are in a gram, though? <laughs> Random. Random question, but okay. It's a, re- it's a reference it's back a reference to, the, to the, uh, the quiz bowl. Yeah. When Randy Orton knew exactly how many ounces are in a gram. He also knew, ironically, how to spell dumbbell. <laughs> how do you spell weed? Um, weed is a, dumb as a bag of rocks sometimes. I think this is when we see Randy turn on Riddle Fight. Wow. Oh, Bold you know what? The buildup has been there to, like, because you can't keep tag teams together forever. Yeah. But so that's what I see. I see Randy turning on Riddle, and I see the Street Profits winning. I do see this outcome happening. I do see the Street Profits winning the championships at the cost of Randy Orton turning on his own partner. I agree. I think the turn has been building up and coming, because how long can we see Randy really be the supporter and advocate of Riddle? I would love to see that, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call one right here. I say that RK Bro retains. Because I do truly feel like you can still go further with Riddle and Randy. Just the way that they've been pushing, you know, with like the spelling bees and all of that. Mm -hmm. So I think that they can still go until maybe somewhere later on down the line, you might see Randy betray him. Because I don't know, Randy seems like he's having a very good time right now. It seems like a lot of veterans are enjoying their time. Brock and Randy. Yeah. So... I uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised for that to happen. I'm yeah, I'm just making a bold prediction on this one. Fair. <laughs> I I think the the turn would be my prediction, but again, we never know. What a stupendous prediction! Oh dear God. Well, I have a feeling the next match will be phenomenal. I get it. It is certainly going to take us over the edge. And if they're not careful, it's going to be rated R. On Razor's Edge. Anyways, we have one Edge versus AJ Styles. Apparently, the dream match that has been kind of in everybody's WWE 2K preferred dream matches that they can make happen, finally coming to reality. At least in the game that works. Gentlemen, how do you feel about this match? I will say one out of the four matches that I'm actually looking forward to in the entire WrestleMania card... Um, I can appreciate the personality change that Edge has gone through, and it's just another showing of like how these, I hate to say it, but these old school Attitude Era stars can turn it and give you something different while still maintaining the character. Um, Dan, how do you feel? Oh, did I cut you off? No, 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 you're fine. Dan? Um, I think, uh, this is not a one-off match. Interesting. Wow. Um, see a series. I yeah, and I envision if you want to know exactly how I think the match is going to end, I think it's going to be a hard fought match. I think AJ's going to go for the phenomenal forearm, and he's going to get speared out of the air. So you think Edge is winning? I think Edge is winning. I say AJ's winning. Kamish? Oh, having to be the tiebreaker. <laughs> yeah, what the heck is going on? You're like the tiebreaker of this whole deal. I'm gonna have to say that to continue this series, we see. A count out. Wow. Really? A count out, or they both knock each other out. Just turns into a brawl where they both... No contest? Yeah, no contest. No contest. What if you have uh, Christian and Gangrel come back? Brood. They're they're, they're not, but it would be nice. (laughs) Maybe Gallows and Anderson come back. You have a little... Never mind. Which we're yeah, thinking. Some people are in Impact. Some people are in AEW. And And they're hiring. uh, I don't know where the other one is. Maybe sucking off blood. <laughs> no contest. I If you we're going to keep this uh, rivalry going to three, four matches, I think it needs to end in a no contest, but they give us possibly one of the best performances we've yet to see in a veteran versus an established veteran given a long while. Yes. I think this one is going to be one of the show stealers for sure. Hopefully. Agreed. Moving on to the second to last match, we have Bobby Boy. You know the duck is dead, right? I know. 
Bobby Boy Lashley versus the giant strongman known as Omas. Omas. I keep making the tongue-in-cheek joke that I'd prefer if this were Bobby Lashley versus Chris Masters to bring everything uh, full circle from the Master Lock Challenge, but... Uh, it, it would work? It would work. It'd be a good story. I got retweeted by Chris Masters about I was gonna this. Say, so he's on board. Congrats to Dan the Man, by the way. Congrats. Uh, Someone got something around here. Yeah, someone got tweeted back. I got blocked. <laughs> and I got nothing. Damn. Short end of the stick. Um, so here's the thing. There's been speculation about this match in the regards of Bobby Lashley's health, that he's not fully 100%, and that technically he wasn't really cleared wow. to come back yet. Although maybe he proved doctors wrong, maybe he proved the medical team wrong. Proved a, uh, pulled a John Cena. I do find this terrifying if all of that is true because, again, injuries, injuries. And, and, and the fact that careers have been shortened by devastating injuries, and this is not your regular, you know, big guy opponent for once. I, I kind of find Omos like a really terrifying threat, if we're being honest. And he hadn't taken a bump since Monday. Yeah. Which I thought they could have saved that for Mania because that's like a WrestleMania moment. Unless they're trying to prove that it's possible and he takes a bigger bump. We'll see. Maybe. But uh, ultimate question is uh, who's winning? I could see this being another attempt for them to get a fast match in. Oh, like a squash I, match? I could see Omos getting like a cold cock hit on Bobby Lashley right at the beginning and winning the match. So you and see, then this continues when Bobby's actually healthy. So you see Omos continuing his undefeated streak? For now, I feel like this might have just been for the sake of putting both of them on the card, giving yep. them the paycheck, yep. and building some anticipation only to not deliver. Yeah. I kind of see the same thing happening, although to make things interesting, the big man does take another bump. This time more crucial... This time, not life or career threatening, but at least a big bump. They break the ring. A holy sh moment? Yep. A holy sh indeed. I'm going to say Lashley. Because? Because I feel like Lashley has kind of fallen off the grid. Um, it's kind of a blur. Like, one second he's not doing anything, then he's champion, then he's not champion. So, I just think, and almost like, okay, I believe he debuted in that last year's Mania, and they really haven't done much with him. He's just kind of been there as he, the tall guy. He's been given a tag team championship with a, a tag team that didn't really take off so well. They never, never really get did. started, if we're being serious. Let's not forget, he is a ninja. What? <laughs> Omas? You guys remember it, don't you? He was the gigantic ninja with, I believe, Tozawa. Oh, dear God. I almost forgot about that. Ah, I hate that. Let's move on to the I next story. I almost <laughs> had it. Get it? <laughs> Full of puns this episode. Kind of like everybody's push on the roster. Yeah, well, if you're not careful, I'm going uh, I'm to go full Will Smith on you. Oh, dear God, not a slap. <laughs> Keep my boy's name out of your mouth. He what? said, keep your boy's name out your mouth. I will. All right. So. I hated all of that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Moving uh, on to, to the main event to of round the entire out night thing. Two, to round it all out, we have, who is currently my favorite version of himself right oh, now. Oh, for sure. The current reigning, defending undisputed WWE heavyweight champion Brock Lesnar. <coughs> that audio is going to spike. Yes, it is. <laughs> Got it. How does Paul Heyman do it? Well, he doesn't do it anymore, that's for sure. Well, Brock did it once, and it actually was pretty good. No, now the wise man just asks people to uh, acknowledge, acknowledge your tribal chief. Very trivial chief. Wow. <laughs> One universal heavyweight champion, Roman Reigns. That's it? You give Brock this great introduction? No, he this? started it. He started it with the uh, undisputed... No, the, with the head of the table. 
<laughs> and to acknowledge him as the universal champion. Uh-huh. Roman Reigns. Yes. <laughs> um, to your point, my favorite version of Brock. Cowboy Brock. Uh, yes. He, it looks like he's having such a good time. I think because he's finally... Okay. Cuffs Let, are off. Cuffs are off, and he literally said it himself. He technically retired when he lost to Drew McIntyre. He said it himself. Like He was done. There was no audiences at the time. It was literally arena matches. Not even uh, little yeah. monitors. Brock said he was done. To see Brock come back, yes. Has there been controversy with some people's feelings of him winning uh, the WWE Championship at a... What was it? Um, elimination, elimination Chamber. chamber? Yeah. Yes. But I think we've seen the best version of Brock that we've ever seen. Yes. yes. He, he, he's been... Um, the next big thing. He's been the uh, conqueror, the conqueror, the beast, the beast incarnate. But I kind of like Cowboy Brock right now. Yeah, I, I'm liking the fact that you know, you give him the freedom to cut his own promos as a professional for 20 plus years. He can do it. He's had it. Well, I'm looking forward to taking a ride on the F5 and then uh, sliding on over to that wedding. You know, um, the F5, the exit, what, what was it called again? What does it lead you to? Um, something that's constantly used at every single WrestleMania. Super I got it. City. What? Oh. What? what? Uh, I, was, I was just going to say Viperville, no enhancement needed. Oh. Um, uh, Ooh. I, was, I thought we were talking about Wristlock Village. But apparently, apparently that that was wrong too. Wait, I, I kind of heard that in Wristlock Village you do find the the list of a thousand and four greatest moves. And number one thousand and four, and don't you ever get it twisted. Always or remember and incorrect. never forget the arm the... bar. What did I cut you off? Yes. Okay. Let's bring it back. Anime feelings about this match, boys. I'm sorry, gentlemen. I'm curious if this mm. fusion of the titles is a long-term thing or a short-term thing. That's, that's what I've been wondering, too. That's one big question mark on this whole thing. If you want me to be honest, I think they have no idea what they're doing. Like, they don't even know how they want to book that 24 hours after WrestleMania. Oh, I'm sure. So. Do we still get the owner making his yearly appearance after Mania to address the situation? Maybe... I mean, that's usually his state of address. Is there a new belt, or do they carry both again? There's a lot of weird things here. Well, because remember, they did this uh, with Randy Orton and John Cena. How long did that last? But I don't know. that. Did they call it a unification yes. match? The they time? literally like put the two together and only had one title until they introduced the Universal Championship. Why did they have to do that? That's a big goal. Dan? Why? That's, um, it. that's the whole question. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's, that's all you need. Um, I think Roman goes over. I was, as much as I would love to see Brock take it all, they're really, like, on the Roman ship. So, I think possibly Roman, and he kind of hinted, he's like, the one thing I've never done is beaten Brock Lesnar at Mania. So, I think he, we're going to see the trifecta, and we're going to see Roman. To bring it back to something you said earlier, Dan, you said that where are we going with the involvement of the rest of the table? This could be their opportunity to show their true loyalty to the head of the table and make sure the unification of the heavyweight championship and universal championship happens for one Roman Reigns. The big thing that I think needs to happen on the other side of this that I think we keep missing the boat on and if you if you introduce Drew McIntyre as the next challenger, you're skipping over it again. Is I don't think we've had like a genuine faction versus faction thing. Like yeah. Roman's just at the top by him. Like he's there. He's got the Usos. He's got his manager, and he's just looming over everybody else. No one's shown the dominance on the other brand. Yeah, and if if we if things had gone differently, we might have been able to get away with genuinely seeing because we saw it at uh what clash of champions or something i forget which show it actually was 
where it Drew was supposed to Roman? No, B- Big E and oh. the New Day versus those three. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's what it was, ballpark. That's the closest we got, and it wasn't even like... I think it was like a loose booking into the future thing, and then they changed... Dip their, your their, toes their, into it, and then... And then burn the paper. Yeah. Um. So I think that that's what we're missing, is we're missing a big, like, cinematic group v group type of thing here and i don't know that there really is one right now but i think that's what they need to build to so let me ask this question are you taking a survey hey yeah there it is do we see roman reigns standing triumphant not only to brock but do we see someone stepping up to him at the end of mania who do you have in mind no this is to ask you two Remember, I'm taking a survey. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if there's anybody else that we're missing right now. It would be a neat touch to like usher in like this new rivalry at the very end of Mania because you're like closing once. You said Dan that WrestleMania is essentially supposed to be like your end, it's like the ending of one season and then the beginning of another. Yeah. So it would be interesting if someone does come out, but the question is who. I'm going to throw this monkey wrench into the equation, but God forbid. And I I think this would be an extremely quick push. Does Roman Reigns have a nightmare looming in his sights? Wow. I mean... It's an honest question. I don't don't think so. I don't think you go straight to Cody into the, the, the title picture. I could see... Because what, what's, the, what's the one that's like three months from now? There's one between Mania and SummerSlam. Which one normally splits them? Money in the Bank? Oh, you're right. That'd be the, the, other, the other two are on too. the other side. Um, I could see SummerSlam maybe seeing Cody versus uh, Roman. 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 Uh, but I think that if Cody returns, Seth and Cody go for another month or two. Roman probably holds on to the unified title against Drew, and then we shift to something different going into SummerSlam. Now what happens to the Cowboy? I think he takes some time off. Or is this his ride into the sunset again? You can never say... I don't know. Never say never. I hate to say it, but it's like that's, that's there's the a reason. in wrestling. Well, because you, you just you don't know. No, of the, course. The, I think the only way you get away with that, and that's not going to happen, is I think you have to send I think you have to send Brock off on a on a high note sabbatical. Oh, no, if not you're sabbatical. if you're going to actually like call it a day. And I would say if you if if Roman was a face or Roman turned face, which he's not going to do because the tribal chief is the thing. Yeah, you could get away with it because then you have this big like show of respect where da da da, da and you play that card. And I don't think we're there. I think they built this story between those two up too much to where it's like a it, it's um. You guys have both have you seen Pirates of the Caribbean? The yes. First one. Yes. Yeah. When Jack Sparrow and Barbosa are both cursed right at the end, and mm-hmm. Barbosa gives his little speech talking about being two immortals locked in uh, eternal combat. Yeah. Yes. Th- that's kind of the tone they've set with these two, is that it's never really over. So is this never like, a, really over. like a Batman Joker thing where it's like they're meant to do this forever? You complete me. Um, <laughs> I think so. Um, at least until there's a time where you get that, like, nice conclusive like that's how got to be the build to the match yeah is it's got to be all right brock look we're gonna do this one more time we're gonna do this dance one last time and then i'm done with you end of an era end of an era once in a lifetime 17th time in a, in a lifetime i was gonna say crazy idea what if you do a double turn What's the double turn? Well, Brock goes heel by the end of it, and then you find Roman being the babyface at the end of Are it. Are you saying we're unleashing the Beast Incarnate? Yes. And if there was, because he said I'm the coming for blood. The yeah. table? He said I'm coming for blood. Like that's not a face thing to say. That's more of an anti-hero heelish thing to that's say. That's a Brock thing. Technically, the, the only problem is that the match 
I mean, you could pull it, and, like, honestly, I wouldn't be opposed to that if we went old school uh, Attitude Era type of thing here, where there's a, ru- a ref bump, and you have this, like, big uh, combative segment where it's like, oh, uh, Brock decided he needs a chair or something. Yeah. Uh, to beat Roman, and or then, yeah, you do the the switch, and or, then your tribal chief is actually a good guy after Mania. Or what if your tribal chief but, tries to pull off the heel persona of getting the chair, and Brock snaps, steals the chair, beats the absolute piss out of him. What if he beats up get... Paul Heyman? You could do that. Yeah. Can Paul take a bump? Can we have five Paul? Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we can. The guy has taken a bump for years. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I anticipate Roman going over. Uh, if they double, if they do a double turn, I'm cool with, Bro- with Brock it. heading out. Yeah. But um, if they don't, I I think Brock takes a takes some time off. Probably comes back for uh, like for blood, some SummerSlam or First next blood. Mania, and that's the end of this. Or yeah. what if he comes back? Uh, for Survivor Series during the champion versus champion match of the brands. If there is one. I mean, if he's coming back, he's coming back at one of the big fours. So, I don't anticipate him coming back for a... For what do they have? Uh, a backlash. A backlash or a... Fast lane. Fast lane. Yeah. 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 Fast lanes always sound like the worst. But, yeah, that's where I'm at. So, I so think Roman, that's... Roman, Roman. Roman. Lovely. The, the tribal chief. Now, the is table. there a possibility that Brock walks away as double champion? Is there a possibility? Mm. Sure. Do we think it's going to happen? No. No. Very well. Okay, let's just start this to end the episode. Let's play devil's advocate. Yeah. What if? What do you do with Brock at this point? Where does he go? Do you turn I, I the think, completely ahead. undisputed Universal Heavyweight Champion into this mass piece of carnage? What I think happens if Brock goes over is I think we get half of the, the turn at WrestleMania. Okay. I think Brock turns heel okay. and he goes over. And Roman takes a small sabbatical, and when he comes back, he's a face again, but he still has the family. Okay. That's my thought. Do you give the Osos time off as well, if you remove their tag team championships? <sighs> Probably you, I mean, you could, because they dropped the belts the night before, and then you could have Brock just ravage the entire bloodline. I was thinking that if you want to build that double turn, you could do that too. If you just wrecks the Usos, wrecks Paul Heyman... And then, you know, because I think that that could be kind of a cool way to have the return is like you put you put them off TV for a bit. You have Brock go on to like a crazy another, streak. Well, you have him go face another uh, another good guy that people like. Like Drew. you could go with Drew. Um, yeah, but then if you have him face Drew, everyone starts asking, "Does Drew finally get his crowd moment?" But my thought with that is that you have him face drew and then you have a moment where brock's about to like or brock brock beats him and he's about to just brutalize drew and then you have the usos come out they hit the double super kick and then roman shows up and spears him and that's your return for the whole bloodline yeah okay i think that would be a really nice punctuation i think an out of sight out of mind mindset for roman would be great if yeah. it happens. If it happens, right. yeah. No Paul Heyman, no Usos, nothing, and then you just... Like, you wipe Roman off the face of the earth. Yeah, temporarily. Temporarily. Okay. Until... Yeah, because it worked wonders for him when he when he came back from the leukemia. Yeah. So... It was, a, it was a revitalization to his career. Everybody was like, all right, cool, I'm here. I think even to a degree with the Tribal Chief gimmick, people are still kind of on board with it. But it's better it, than what he was doing before he turned, so... Yeah, um, I think what it, it but is... But it is, is staling a little, because it seems like the same note. Yes. I think he okay. I've always said this about Roman that when he was a face, no one was sold on it. Yeah. No one was sold on who he was, and people were booing him as a heel. But he wanted to sell it so bad. I'm your baby face. But at one point, after he did what he did against the Fiend, oh, Wyatt. Jesus. By the way, we miss you, or Wyndham. <laughs> But once we started seeing, you know, the head of the table, the tribal chief, like this 
final complete heel turn. Yeah. Some people embraced it. Some people enjoyed it. I mean, I haven't never really been a true fan of it, but I like the fact that it's like, okay, it's believable now. Yeah. There's reason to boo you. There's reason to be sold on you as a It's heel. a package now. You exactly. Can, like, everything and, makes sense. And sometimes the turn is exactly what you need. Yep. Like, now to get people to actively, like, cheer him as a face, the heel turn might have been necessary. Yeah. And I think people buy into it now. Definitely. So to see Roman and the Usos and Paul completely disappear off the face of the earth, quote unquote, or in other words, give them time off. Yeah. If you if do Brock the wins. build, up, yeah. If you do the what if scenario that Brock wins, you build up Brock as this maniacal apex beast that just goes ape shit on everyone. How many months are we away from SummerSlam? Six. Or Survivor? Okay. Six, we'll yeah. say six months. Or SummerSlam, what? Normally August. June? August. 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 Yeah. We see Roman come back unexpectedly. I mean, you can either hear, you know, the head of the table's music playing or he can just do one of those, like, surprise. Pop-ups. I think Money in the Bank would be great if he comes back. So quick. And then you set it up for SummerSlam. Because if Money in the Bank, yeah, you set it. the match up for SummerSlam. Yeah, so that would make that would make. So what if sense. you have? What if else Roman wins Money in the Bank? Pulls a Brock. Yeah, I mean, apparently Brock can enter himself into <laughs> Royal whatever Rumble, match he wants. Uh, freaking all that's Money left. He puts match. himself in a championship scramble, and then there you go. I'm down. I'm all in. Or anyway, double or nothing. <laughs> anyway, so let's wrap it up. We've been going for a while, and. Uh, God bless you if you're still here. <laughs> I mean, if you've fallen asleep, just be very careful of that 10,000-year nap. It'll put a crick in your neck. What? This is some ASMR. What? what? AWP. What? what? Anything Wrestling Podcast. What? what? Why do you guys <laughs> keep doing that? All right, let's, br- let's bring let's, it home. Let's bring it home. So... There you go, guys. We just gave our predictions on both nights of WrestleMania 38. It's said to be the most stupendous WrestleMania of all time. We'll see how everything goes. Leave your projections down in the comments. See how you line up with us. And until next time, on behalf of the commish, Dan, the man, and myself, we thank you guys for joining us, and we will catch you on the next one.